Hey guys, I'm Andre, hopefully your Minsk guide for tourism, relocation and real estate. Today I'm going to run a short video about how visa-free mode works when you're visiting Belarus in a short-term stay. A few years ago this mode was introduced allowing 30 days visa-free for a, a list of certain nationalities to spend in Belarus. Uh, on tourism, business, private purposes, whatever, and to enjoy the country without any extra formalities, which uh, definitely facilitated the flow of visitors into the country. In light of the recent developments, one may think that the country is closed, but uh, the whole thing is still working. So let's see how it works and uh, what has changed since 2018. When this law was introduced in the field, it was just five days, then it was extended to 30 days, and the list of countries eligible for this varied between 75 and 80, and there were several out of these coming with um, uh, remarks like, you have to travel to Europe first, and then you can come fly in here and have 30 days without visa. The general idea is you would normally have 90 days uh, for short-term stay in Belarus unless you come from EU, because later on Belarus signed an accord with EU about 90-day stays uh, in uh, Belarus and the other way around uh, in a 180-day frame. So if you are an EU citizen, of course, minus UK and Iceland, if I recall it right, the term of stay can be basically 180 days in a year. For everybody else, excluding the Americans, they now have to come on a visa. The visa-free mode is 30 days at a time, 90 days in a year total. Unless your specific country, like Israel, Brazil, Turkey, has a more sophisticated mutual agreement with Belarus. A little important thing here, there is no electronic visa, there is no online visa, there is no visa at all. When we say visa-free, it's not about a free visa, like in case uh, with Japan, uh, who normally have to get a visa back at home if they travel over land, but they don't have to pay for it. The, uh, there is no visa, basically. You have to fly in and out, and that's the fundamental condition. Also, when the law was initiated, there was a bit uh, more traffic around here. I mean, air traffic flights to Europe and from Europe. Right now, it's just mostly layovers via Turkey, Dubai and a couple of other countries, Armenia and Georgia, if I recall it right. So right now, it's not really that important to fly in and out. If you flew in and there is no flight coming, let's say, in a week when your 30 days are done, there is a way of getting a land exit visa. It's a roughly 100 bucks procedure. And if you need to uh, get some help with that, you can message me. My contacts are under the video. The more crucial point, which is still there, is that the visa-free via Minsk Airport doesn't work via Russia. There are no checkpoints or international border control. Uh, from our side. So if you are physically flying away to Moscow, where you will have problems yourself. Coming from here without visa, uh, the uh, departure will not be uh, scanned and processed in the proper way. So technically you'll stay here in Belarus, you'll outstay your 30 days, and you'll get a five-year travel ban, for example. So the general idea here, roughly, uh, you have to fly in and fly out. But uh, if you can't fly out, it's not the end of the world. You just can't sit on the train and go exit uh, across the Lithuanian the Polish border at the moment. Well, there are no trains or bus. Uh, you would have to go through some formalities to get the exit visa. Well, the day count is simple. Your first day is the day of your arrival. You get scanned into the country by the border control. And if you are landing at 23.30 or something, you may give it half hour and a smoking room or whatever room you'll find before the passport's control to steal a day, so to speak, if you really need 30 inside the country. And the last day is your day of departure. Between them, mathematically, there must be 28 days or less uh, because it's maximum 30-day uh, visa-free thing. And the requirements are quite simple. Uh, flights are not really required. If one takes a closer look at the website of the Foreign Ministry, which has all this information in an official Belarusian English language, so to speak, uh, there'll be a few interesting discoveries. Apparently, hotel booking is not really 
required. You just have to have a simple passport, normal passport. The passport has to be valid at least 90 days after you uh, plan to depart uh, Belarus. You don't have to have a return ticket unless you come from a country like Egypt, Gambia, Haiti. Uh, that's the so-called mig migration risk countries. And the uh, medical insurance coverage is still mandatory for everybody. It has to have minimal coverage of 10,000 euro. It may be one of the two state companies which are selling online and of course you may not be able to buy it online or it may be just any company that clearly says that guy such and such has a policy with this number and insurance worldwide or specifically Belarus with minimal coverage of 10,000 euro or more. Uh, especially this may be a big point at the migration office that may be bitchy about uh, not seeing the Belarusian policy, which you can't get from abroad, uh, but you can get it on arrival at the airport, uh, some extra hustle for you. Uh, but some of them are okay with the clearly laid out information in a foreign policy. If your policy says who is the policy holder, how much is the coverage and what's the geography, they accept it when you have to deal with them for registration or for the exit visa. Last but not least, your pocket money is expected to amount to two base units a day or 50 base units uh, for the total stay of 30 days. The equivalent of base unit I'll put somewhere here for your conversion convenience. In the past, they used to make a point about the booking that is actually confirmed and printed out on the paper. Now, I haven't found such information on the website, which means that if you're coming from EU or US, you probably won't be troubled with that. Besides, everybody knows that booking.com is down, so you'll have an issue with that. But for to be on the safe side, I would recommend to have some kind of a paper explaining where the hell you are going to stay. To elaborate on the payment means, uh, it may be a card with a statement uh, with uh, the balance and this balance can be checked at the airport before the passport's control if you look too suspicious. It may be just cash equivalent of those two base units that is in your pocket. I very much recommend to have cash because as you may know some of the just three local banks are uh, sanctioned and the Visa and MasterCard payments won't go through. But on the accounts of my uh, very few tourists, of course, now the success, success rate is about 70%. Uh, the rest can be fixed with cash, which again is highly recommended to have on your charming person. And we have pointed that out already, but the papers are still important in this country, so if you print out your policy, and as long as it's not a 100-page contract, of course, it's just a statement or a confirmation that says you are covered in Belarus for this much your booking confirmation, if possible, and your card statement. Uh, although, again, you'll have cash if you're a reasonable guy. This will be just enough to make it through. I very much appreciate your feedback underneath this video, your questions. Uh, if you are coming from EU, uh, US, Canada, Japan, Australia, from let's say non-migration risk countries, I'll be happy to ask my partners to facilitate your visa, please message me. And the visa support may be rendered easily as long as you have a valid reason and the uh, requirements are met on both sides. Thank you very much for watching the video. Any donations, the links are down below. My contacts are there as well. For any technical, for anything specific, please contact me directly. Otherwise, questions are welcome underneath there. Hope to see you in Minsk someday. Uh, the next expat meeting is this Sunday. Announcement is down below. The place is Malt and Hops in Zibitskaya. Happy to see you someday and cheers.